Minnie Mouse is the lovable female counterpart of Mickey Mouse, and alongside him she has joined in on hundreds of exciting adventures, becoming one of the most iconic fictional figures of the 20th century. In 2018, alongside Mickey, Minnie turned 90 years old, and in her nine decades of existence, her look, design, and even personality have evolved drastically through a variety of cycles, along with changing animation styles and audience expectations. And while Minnie's changes somewhat mirrored Mickey's along the way, animators and storytellers always found special ways to make her stand out from the crowd. With her visual design altering close to 20 times across 91 years, some more more noticeable than others, Minnie has undergone a slow yet often subtle evolution. In this video, I will trace the evolution of Minnie Mouse right from her first appearance in 1928 to today in 2019. To do so, we will look at the most drastic and important changes prevalent across more than nine decades of shorts and series. Though Minnie sadly didn't receive much fanfare during Mickey's 90th celebrations despite sharing the same birthday, it's finally her time to shine in this edition of Explaining Disney. Minnie and Mickey were both conceived together for 1928 short Plain Crazy. While Plain Crazy was the fourth Mickey Mouse short to be released, it was the first produced and shows us Minnie's most primitive design. Minnie was originally created as the sidekick and love interest of Mickey, but also in some respects was created as his foil, providing a comedic and lovable rivalry which would see her thwarting or derailing many of his plans and escapades. Minnie was not a villain in any sense of the word. She was simply Simply a strong female character who knew how to play hard to get and keep troublemaker Mickey in his place. Minnie was conceived as a free spirit and full of energy and was designed after the brash and flamboyant flapper girls of the 1920s, a generation of free spirited women who went against social norms and broke boundaries in what was then considered acceptable female behaviour. In Plain Crazy, Minnie wears a flapper dress and patched lace underwear, which are often visible throughout the shorts. It's interesting to note that Minnie's dress would be plain for decades in the cartoons that would appear with polka dots on the title cards and in publicity materials and posters right from the very beginning. This is what would become the most recognisable Minnie design. Just as Mickey, however, she doesn't wear shoes in the earliest design, though she does sport incredibly long and fashionable eyelashes. 1928's The Gallopin' Gaucho, the second produced but fourth release Mickey short, would add another couple of layers to Minnie's appearance. Her flapper dress would gain two large polka dots, and just as Mickey, she would be shown wearing shoes for the very first time. Minnie's shoes are a pair of high-heeled pumps that are incredibly oversized. Minnie's pumps were designed this way for comedic effect, and many of the early shorts would see her struggling to keep in them. Gallopin' Gaucho is seen by many as the short in which Mickey transitioned from troublemaker to hero and can likewise be seen as the short in which Minnie transitioned from foil and free spirit to damsel in distress, a role she would take up for many years. Steamboat Willie would be the first widely released Mickey Mouse short, though it was the third produced. In this short, Minnie would first be seen in her bowler hat with protruding flower, which would go on to form an iconic part of her look in shorts going forward. In order to make the characters a bit more visually appealing, both Minnie and Mickey would undergo a slight visual redesign, as their eyes would transition from large white eyeballs with large black pupils to beadier eyes, which were really nothing more than small black ovals. In addition, Minnie's eyes eyelashes were greatly diminished, and in the few shots she's seen with them, they are no longer as prominent as they previously were. This was perhaps done as a way to make Minnie less promiscuous and outlandish, and more refined and classier. In 1929's The Carnival Kid, white gloves were finally introduced to Minnie's design, after having been introduced to Mickey's two shorts earlier in The Opry House. By drawing the character's hands in white gloves, it meant that animators could better animate hands. Animators found that it was near impossible to draw solid black hands against a solid black body, and it became noticeable that it was difficult for audiences to distinguish one from the other. It's also said that Walt decided upon the gloves in order to make the characters appear more human, 
woman, thus emphasising their anthropomorphised attributes and giving them a little extra charm. Carnival Kid would also see Minnie and Mickey take on their most iconic pie-eye look, which saw them drawn with small triangles in their now large pupils, making them appear as a pie with a slice taken out. The pie-eye design was common in animation of the 1920s and 1930s and was used to depict light reflection, which wasn't really possible in any other way until the introduction of colour animation. Pie Eyes also helped add a new life and expression to cartoon characters and definitely gave Minnie a more emotive look. Minnie and Mickey would appear with Pie Eyes on and off until Disney discontinued its use in 1932. Along with the Pie Eyes, the characters would be drawn with eyebrows and Minnie's eyelids would appear to be drawn with a reflective eyeshadow. In the short, Minnie is also revealed to be wearing black stockings, another hallmark of the classic flapper look. 1929's Wild Waves would see Minnie appear in a themed costume for the very first time, wearing a classic 1920s striped bikini synonymous with the flapper girls of the era, and a small throwback to her design origins. Minnie would occasionally appear in themed costumes throughout the short series, solidifying her as a fashionista. From this moment on, Minnie would regularly appear in shorts without her bowler hat, though it would still remain a staple of her design for years onwards, appearing in most of the shorts of the 19th. In 1935's On Ice, Minnie would appear on screen in colour for the very first time and would also appear in her polka dot dress for the first time during a short. In this short only, her dress was seen to be yellow and her bowler hat was seen to be red, its most iconic colour. In the previous short, Pluto's Judgment Day, in which Minnie did not appear, Mickey had undergone a fundamental redesign, one which would become the standard design going forward. Because Minnie had followed Mickey's lead right from the start, she once again followed suit. In On Ice, Minnie was debuted in her brand new redesign, where she previously had an asymmetrical design and was drawn with rubber hose style animation, which allowed for unrealistic movements. She now had a pear-shaped body, allowing animators to employ squash and stretch animation techniques, giving her the ability to move more freely and realistically as if she had real weight and could abide by the rules of gravity. The change also allowed Minnie to be drawn in new flexible positions and in a more emotive range of expressions and bodily movements, giving her a whole new life, personality and realism. What's more important to note here is that where Minnie and Mickey had evolved hand in hand over the earliest shorts, Minnie was now falling by the wayside, adapting to the new animation styles that had previously been employed on Mickey incredibly slowly. Not only was she late to the punch to get her first squash and stretch appearance, but she would debut in colour an entire seven shorts after Mickey had, and this is for the simple fact that Minnie was no longer being utilised in as many shorts. The 1930s of course saw the introduction of two new Disney characters, Donald Duck and Goofy, and by 1935 the two had become insurmountably popular, with Donald in particular now becoming the most popular of all the Disney characters, even Mickey. With the popularity of Donald and Goofy skyrocketing and their many appearances in Mickey shorts, they were now being utilised in the way Minnie was in the 1920s and early 1930s as the comedic companion and foils of Mickey, making Minnie's role somewhat, sadly, obsolete. While Mickey would appear in an average of 7 to 9 shorts per year between 1935 and 1937, Minnie would only appear in 1 per year. That said, it's also important to note that Mickey was also facing a drop in popularity during these years and in 1938 appeared in only 6 shorts while Donald appeared in 11. This drop in appearances meant that between 1935 and 1953, when Mickey's classic shorts came to an end, Minnie would appear in only 19 more shorts, while Mickey would appear in 54. That said, in Minnie's next few appearances in the second half of the 1930s, of which there were only seven, she would remain in the same design, but would once again ditch the polka dot dress in favour of a plain dress, usually coloured blue, but occasionally shown in different colours. By the late 1930s, animator Fred Moore, who was the studio's Mickey specialist suggested to Walt Disney that Mickey needed yet another modernised redesign. Pleased with Moore's proposed ideas, Walt agreed to allow Mickey, and thus also Minnie, to undergo yet
yet another significant evolution which was debuted in Mickey's Surprise Party. Moore, who was also the artist who brought the squash and stretch designs to the studio, now designed Mickey and Minnie in yet another more expressive and more human way. This iteration retained Moore's pear-shaped body design but also gave the characters a larger, more pronounced head and more realistic eyes, once again giving them white eyes with black pupils. Here Minnie not only looks more human but she is also cuter and more attractive to audiences. Mickey's Surprise Party is also the first short to debut Minnie's iconic bow which would take place of the now out of style bowler hat and flower, further modernising the character. Over the next couple of years, Minnie would continue to appear in the same design, though with a couple of different colour variations on her dress and shoes, which by this point had also acquired small bows. By 1942's wartime short, Out of the Frying Pan, Into the Firing Line, animators began depicting Minnie in more casual, domestic clothing and aprons. In fact, throughout the 1940s and 1950s, Minnie would be depicted as a housewife, rarely being seen outside of the house. Her clothing would even change once more, taking on a more domestic, covered up, conservative look. It's a pretty shocking and somewhat demeaning thought today, but in relation to what was going on socially and politically during this time, it's something that would have seemed fairly conventional and idealistic. During wartime, while the men were off fighting on the battlefields, many women were conf- fine to the household, working harder than ever to upkeep domestic chores and such a lifestyle would even be glamorised in the media. In relation, while Disney sent Donald and Pluto off to war and kept Mickey out of the spotlight, they made Minnie a domestic goddess and practically kept her confined to the house. 1947's Mickey's Delayed Date would be Minnie's last main appearance in a Mickey Mouse cartoon, and one of only three she'd appear in during the 1940s, with most of her appearances being in Pluto and Figaro cartoons, pairing her with Mickey's dog Pluto and her own cat Figaro. While Minnie would appear in four more classic shorts, this would be the last time she would share screen time with Mickey in the classic short series. 1950's Pluto and the Gopher would feature Minnie's final main role in a classic short, while 1953's Pluto's Christmas Tree would mark her final appearance in a three second cameo. Yep, that's it. Minnie Mouse had started her screen life as the beloved and inseparable female companion of Mickey and had ended it in a fizzle. She wouldn't even be given the grace to star in Mickey's final short alongside Pluto that very year. Following Mickey's 1953 short The Simple Things, Mickey and Minnie were retired from short films as public interest in them continued to wane and Storyman found it increasingly harder to write for them. While Minnie wouldn't appear on screen again for three decades, it's worth noting one Minnie design that spawned in the Disney parks, which just so happens to be Minnie's most iconic look in modern times. The red and white polka dot dress and bow and yellow shoes look. This look was created to give Minnie a fresh, modern design during the late 1970s and carried over into merchandising. It wouldn't be until 1983 that Minnie would appear on screen again, taking on the role of Mrs. Cratchit in Mickey's Christmas Carol. Here, Minnie would once again revert to her iconic 1940s Fred Moore style, even wearing an iteration of her domestic look of the later shorts. After being reintroduced to a new generation in Christmas Carol, Minnie experienced a surge in popularity. And thanks to this, in 1988, she would star in her very first starring role in the NBC television special, Totally Mini. The special would feature a series of classic Disney shorts and musical numbers presented between a series of animation and live action hybrid bookends in which 1940s design Mini appeared in a number of trendy modern clothing designs, once again solidifying her as a fashionista of the modern age. 1999's Mickey short Runaway Brain would once again feature Mini in her classic 1940s design but would put her in her late 1930s early 1940s modern clothing with a bow, skirt and large pumps. This would be the first time in a hand-drawn animation where Minnie would appear in her red and yellow colour scheme, albeit without polka dots. This same design would be utilised once again in 1999 TV series Mickey Mouse Works, however she would be depicted in her classic early 40s blue colour scheme. The design would also be utilised in feature Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas in 1999 and its sequel Twice Upon a Christmas in 2004, the latter of the two where she'd appear in 3D CG animation for the very first time. In both films, Minnie would be presented in a variety of 
costumes, both inspired by her classic 40s look and her late 1940s domestic look. Minnie's 3D CG design would also be utilised in 2006's Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, where she would appear in her iconic polka dot dress and bow, but in a pink colour scheme instead of red. Minnie's popularity in Clubhouse spawned her own short series in 2011, Minnie's Bow Tunes, where she'd appear in the same design. After 83 years, Minnie's Bow Tunes became the first and currently only cartoon short series to bear Minnie's name. While Minnie's CG design has become synonymous with modern Disney, in 2013 Minnie appeared in 3D theatrical short Get a Horse, in a style inspired by her classic 1929 design. The short begins as an homage to late 1920s Mickey's cartoons, but then transitions her into the third dimension. It's interesting to note here that while Minnie appears in the traditionally animated portion of this short with a plain dress, once she transitions into 3D, her dress gains its polka dots, utilising both classic 1920s looks. Minnie's most recent outings have seen her appear in the latest series of Mickey Mouse, Paul Rudish, Disney Channel and Web Shorts. Here, however, Minnie appears in a more stylized form, which incorporates many elements from her various eras. Mostly, she takes on the appearance of a classic 1920s Minnie, with her bowler hat with flower, frilly skirt and lace underwear, large eyelashes and pie eyes, but incorporates the colour scheme of the later iconic Minnie design, red skirt with white polka dots and yellow pumps. With her current iteration it appears Minnie, now finally paired back up with Mickey for good, has come full circle. And it is wonderful to see her finally taking the spotlight again in ways she never did previously. And with that, it's over to you out there. I want to know what is your favourite Minnie Mouse appearance over the last 87 years. Fire away in the comments below and let me know your thoughts. If this is your first time viewing one of my videos, you like what you've seen, you'd like to see more like this in the future, then please don't forget to hit that big old subscribe button up on your screen right now, and also hit that like button down below if you're feeling extra generous. Also, don't forget to check out my many social media accounts, and please consider supporting me over on Patreon. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you have a wonderful day.